Welcome back to Impossible Color. Today I'm going to show you how to sharpen your image using the high pass filter. I'm sure many of you are familiar with sharpening by going to the filter menu and going to sharpen and selecting one of the options in here. I know most of my other videos you can see me using on sharp mask or some variation of it. And a lot of people also like to use smart sharpen. Um, what I use high pass filter sharpening for is usually images where say I get a man that has very rugged features or a lot of wrinkles. Maybe I want to do a cityscape that's really gritty, uh, something that has a lot of texture, the rocks or animals, stuff like that. And this particular image that I'll be working with today of the bald eagle has a lot of detail in the feathers and in the talons and in this leather glove and I really want to make that pop and show it off. Now you can use this filter very subtly and uh, just the same as you would any other sharpening technique but um, I'm going to show you how to use it uh, a little bit stronger. I'm going to exaggerate it so that you can see it very clearly in this tutorial. So the first thing that you want to do is make a duplicate of your background layer and I'm going to go to image, adjust and desaturate it. And before I get into showing you how to use this technique, I'm going to show you the difference if you didn't desaturate it. So I just saved something up here. If I zoom in, this is if I did a really exaggerated uh, high pass filter here. So that's when I desaturated it. So it was black and white. And here's what it would look like if it was color. And you can see that it adds a lot of saturation to the image, particularly on the halo. And you can see that beak just kind of pop with color. If that's something that you want to add some color at the same time, go for it. But I find that's much easier to control on your own using hue and saturation, etc. Okay, so the first step is we duplicated it and we made it grayscale. Now you want to go to filter and go down here to the bottom where it says other and select high pass. I'm doing this a little bit out of order. Um, I'm going to show you how to set it to overlay later on but I, I purposely did it a little bit out of order so that I could just explain what's going on here first. So the option that you have to work with is the radius. And the beautiful thing about the high pass filter is it's pretty much picking up all the e edges of your image, whereas your other sharpening techniques will pick up everything. There is one option in here under sharpen that says uh, sharpen edges, but it really doesn't work for me even if I run it three or four times so this gives you uh, quite a bit more control for the edges so you want to select a radius I find something somewhere between 1 and 10 I'm gonna do a super exaggerated one just to show you uh, why you shouldn't go totally wacky here and you'll see a lot of images out there that they really overdo this so then on the layer blending mode, I'm going to set it to overlay. And you can see this crazy dark halo effect that's going on on, on the edge of your image. And it, it just looks really heavy handed and not very appealing at all. The sharpening effect is nice, but along the edges, it just looks Almost like it's embossed or kind of like a crayon outline or something. So let's undo that and go back in and to high pass. And I'm going to select a value, let's say, of about five. And now I can set it to overlay. Now if you want to have more control you can set it to overlay before you actually run the high pass filter 
and then you can see the effect of what you're changing as you go. Let's go back to overlay. And basically you want to work, make sure that you don't have a strong halo on the outside. If your image is used for print, you may want to go down to some really small value, like perhaps one or two, something somewhere in there. Um, but if you are doing an image for web, you know, when you zoom out and you look at kind of an average viewing size, that kind of halo may not mean as much and it may actually give it a nice pop. Now there's different blending modes that you could use for this. If you want to get a more subtle look, you can choose soft light. So I'll just zoom in here and show you the difference. So overlay soft light is slightly softer version. And you could also choose hard light if you want it to be a little bit more exaggerated. So let's compare the original overlay to hard light. And back again. Another technique that you can also do is you can duplicate to give a stronger effect. So you can do multiple copies of that. And if you want to give an even softer look, let's say we went back to the original and put it on soft light and it was still too much, you can always just turn down the opacity like this. Now one cool trick that I really like to do is stacking of different values. So I know that I did five for the first one and I'm just going to make a duplicate again and I'll put that on top and I'm going to go to filter back to high pass and now I'm going to do a really refined one so I did the first value was at two, uh, five pixels and now I'm going to do the second one at two pixels and I'm going to do overlay there and now you can see just gives us an extra layer of sharpening on top of that and just for sake of example I'm gonna do one more <laughs> I'm so used to going to sharpen that my hand automatically goes there go back to high pass and let's just go super exaggerated we'll go to eight and we'll set that one in the bottom and put it to overlay as well and it gives a really strong halo but let's say that you wanted a real heavy-handed look you could stack that one on so that was the eight the five and the two together and maybe individually you want to tone them down so okay that eight is let's say we only want to give that about 20 percent and the five was a bit strong too we'll give that 50 percent and then leave the two on the full value and you can just play around with your different layers stack them up duplicate them change the opacity change the blending modes and do whatever you like to get the perfect combination for the look that you're going for thanks for checking out impossible color i hope you learned a lot about high pass filter sharpening if you thought this tutorial was pretty useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this as they come out, please click the little green subscribe button below. If you want to add some comments below, I'd love to hear from you. If you have cool ideas for new videos, I'd be happy to check them out. And you never know, I might pick that as a topic for next week's video.